It's confession time. I had an interesting experience a number of years ago. I was invited by the Review and Herald Publishing Association to record on CD sound the entire audio Bible. That is Dr. Jack Blanco's revolutionary paraphrase of the Bible called the clear word. Many of you might be familiar with how that modernized paraphrase came about. Jack Blanco tried reading the Bible to his grandchildren for evening devotionals, but he realized that for five and six year olds, the old King James version with its Shakespearean these and thous just wasn't very appealing and understandable. So in his private morning devotionals, Jack began to rewrite it, sketching out modernized notes. And then he tried to put it into contemporary everyday language for the kids at night. You know, the kids loved it. He kept doing that for years, making notes, making sure as a theologian and biblical scholar that he was faithful to the meaning of the original text. As a professor and theologian, he knew Greek and Hebrew, but this had to be an easy translation, understandable for his grandchildren. Well, it was finally published by the Review and Herald as a paraphrased Bible. Jeannie and I purchased a copy, and we began to read through it that year for our own morning devotions. I'll never forget the very first morning when we sat down for worship and began to read. It was euphoric. I began reading out loud from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. I was so emotionally choked up that I actually broke into tears and wept. Tears of joy. It was so refreshing, so beautiful. A new version of reading sacred scripture. Now, of course, please know, it's not a literal translation. It's a paraphrase, but so clear and powerful. A unique way to get people back to reading the Bible. Joy in reading God's Word. Well, fast forward a few years. Many of you know about my lifelong experience in on-air radio television broadcasting. Dr. Blanco and the Review and Herald decided they wanted the clear word put on tape. So farmers driving their tractors listening on their headsets or truck drivers in those great big semi-tractor trailers driving across the country could listen to the Bible, an audio version. Well, whose voice could they ask to put clear word into an audio version? They graciously invited me if I would put my voice on tape and do the entire clear word paraphrase Bible. But I had some serious reservations at first because, wow, I know world famous voices like Alexander Scorby and HMS Richards have taped audio versions of the Bible. And these are classics. These amazing voices took years to record the entire King James Version. Me, a busy radio evangel and traveling preacher, when would I do this? How would I find the time? This wasn't going to be part of my regular job description or assignment, no. It had to be on private days off and my own personal time away from my job. And then to make things worse, I discovered by talking with my friend Wayne Hooper, who recorded HMS Richards decades previous when he put the entire King James Bible on tape, that this took Pastor Richards four years to complete the task. Oh, but Richards knew his Bible so thoroughly and memorized so many dozens of chapters he could read it without mistakes, often without even looking at the Bible, sometimes entire chapters without a single error, having to stop the tape, you know, erase, redo difficult sections or get pronunciations just right. Well, Lonnie was no such scholar, and I had another full-time job, my radio broadcasts and travel to camp meetings in Russia and Ukraine and Philippines and Cuba and Australia and international live by satellite evangelistic campaigns in Africa and the Philippines, the United States. How could I do this? When? Again, this would be on my own free time. I'd have to get up early in the morning or stay up late at night and do it. 
holidays, Sundays, vacation, weekends. Wow. To be honest, it overwhelmed me. But I prayerfully said, yes, I'll do it. And started to work on it. And yes, it did take me over four years to complete the audio Bible of the clear word paraphrase. Oh, but I'll tell you, what a blessing. What a privilege. And here's what I want to share with you today. I told you yesterday about Bruce Marciano, and how he became a brand new, transformed, born again, new Christian, as he prepared for seven months to portray a joyful Jesus in filming the book of Matthew on his knees, praying, begging God to help Bruce actually incarnate Jesus in that film, memorizing huge portions of Matthew for taping. Well, that became me, Lonnie. Before I'd creep out of bed at 4.30 in the morning and go to the studio and turn on the lights and load the tapes and switch on the machine, all alone, I'd get down on my knees and I'd ask God, sometimes beg God, please help me. Lord, I'm up to chronicles and numbers with all these names and begats and difficult pronunciations. Lord, I need your guidance to remember how I pronounced those words when I was back there in the books of First and Second Kings. Every time I went in and I sat down there behind the microphone, it was like I was entering the sacred ground holy ground to read God's word out loud on tape. Same thing, an awesome experience. Thanksgiving, holidays, Christmas, weekends, whenever I was home, after work hours, I was right back there behind the microphone to put the word of God on tape. And this went on for four years. Every single time before switching on the recorder, I always first spend at least one full hour on each chapter, praying over it, reading it intensely, trying to make sure I understood what was trying to be conveyed by the Holy Spirit. Then I got down on my knees and I cried out, Lord, Lord, this just can't be a tape recording with my voice on it. This is your sacred word, the Holy Scriptures, the Bible. Lord, I want my voice and my intonations and my inflections to be you speaking. Please help me. I'm just a lump of clay, human lips. You are the master potter. You, please speak through me. You guide me. You help me. I get choked up telling you about this. Sometimes when I recorded certain deeply moving passages like Jesus in Pilate's judgment hall, or hanging there on the cross. I would actually break down with emotion and weep. I'd have to stop the tape and do it over again, several times. When I read the passion of Jesus, Christ at his betrayal by Judas in Gethsemane, or Peter's denial in Pilate's judgment hall, and I became so overwhelmed I couldn't speak, couldn't talk, I would start but couldn't finish one short sentence. I just break into tears. What to do? Again, and this is a personal confession, I'd have to stop the tape or go back and erase all of my choked up sobbing and redo those verses, sometimes several times over. And listen, if you listen to them today, You'll notice I actually left some of those sobs on the recording because I feel God impressed me to put such passion and pathos into those particular passages. So often my friends today or people who listen to the Clear Word CDs tell me, Lonnie, I listen to those. I sense such sincerity and pathos when I hear you. You, you incarnated yourself. You put yourself into those verses. They are God's words speaking to you and through you, and I feel God through you speaking to me, not just canned plastic, not routine. You're serious, intense, almost like it's not you, but it is the Holy Spirit speaking through you. Well, I take absolutely no credit for that privilege of recording the clear word. 
paraphrased version of the Bible. My point is that I don't think there has been at any time in my ministry when I felt more joy, more close to God. It was His Holy Spirit, His inspiration. There's never been a time when I felt more joy in Jesus, joy in living, sheer joy. No time, not ever. Which brings us to today, this moment. Here in my retirement years, writing, editing, and recording this year, long series of daily devotionals, 365 of them. Why? Truth is, I absolutely love Jesus so much, so much more than ever because I am doing this. I rediscover every time I sit down in front of this camera, joy in reading and writing and studying God's Word, continuing to read and reread Scripture again and again, focusing on Jesus. Jesus, the man of joy. It profoundly moves me. And every time I read God's Word, I realize truly I have more joy in my life. Uh, permit me to share some private secrets about this Hope TV series. People ask me, why do you do these Hope Talks? Why now? During this pandemic? Why not just be out there golfing or taking trips to Hawaii or hobbies or visiting family and friends? I mean, you're retired, Lonnie. Relax. Take it easy. Well, our world suddenly changed so dramatically and so suddenly in just one week. Remember back in 2019 when COVID-19 hammered the entire planet? Pandemic, a new word. First time ever for the entire planet when everything shut down. Countries, cities, airlines, shopping centers, schools closed, churches boarded up. I mean, you couldn't find toilet paper in the supermarket. Couldn't work out in your own gym. Every country. For the last few years, nothing is, is the same. Everything is different. And the speed with which our world is tobogganing downhill into the apocalypse takes one's breath away. As I've been rereading my Bible, I've been feeling strongly impressed to come out of retirement, come out of hiding. The Holy Spirit deeply impressed me that I ought to put together these hope talks, brief 10 to 12 minute devotions. I mean, no one's ever done that before. Yes, you can find 60-second spiritual nuggets on religious television or radio or one-minute Bible passages. In fact, you can buy devotional books at Costco or Christian bookstores. But 12-minute video devotions? I mean, this is something brand new. Jeannie and I feel strongly that if time should last and we should not be alive in 10 or 20 years, well, I still have a radio voice, and we can leave behind us a legacy that will continue to bless and encourage people for years to come. Make it available right here on Hope TV, or the internet, or on YouTube. Why? To inspire and challenge and encourage other people to come to know Jesus and joy in Jesus too. To present Jesus and God's Holy Word so attractively they want to be part of Jesus and His incredible forever family. So there you have it. The rest of the story. My story. <laughs> A little confession. Through these talks, friend, get to know Jesus. He's more exciting than a Saturday night date. There's an abiding joy in Jesus. Just reading about Him and the way He handled life is a tremendous inspiration. It keeps me looking up. It keeps me challenged. Just that fact keeps more joy in my life because I know He wants to give me that joy, that hard-won joy that Johnny Erickson Tata talks about, that Jesus incarnated joy that Bruce Marciano talked about. Joy is not a natural commodity you can buy or keep in a storage bin. It's a gift. It's Jesus' gift to the world. It's a gift we must receive every day, one day at a time, from the giver, from Jesus. 
It's the joy of Jesus. But it can be yours and mine too. Life-changing joy in Jesus. Yours for the taking.